Hey, fourth grade, it's Miss Tarleton here with a language lesson for you on grammar. So we've been talking about how to write well, how to write reports and note cards and letters and things to people. And in order to be an effective writer, an effective communicator, whether it's speaking or it's written, um, we need to know our parts of speech. And so we've already talked about how a sentence is a group of words which makes a complete thought. So a sentence will often answer a question like who, how, when, where, why, what, um, and it's a complete thought. And so we've talked about how you can have fragments, which are not fully complete thoughts. You can have sentences, which will have capitalization at the beginning and a punctuation mark at the end. And then we've also talked about how you can have run together sentences. We're going to see some examples in our lesson today on all of those three things that I've talked about. So the important thing that I want us to discuss is that a sentence has two parts, two parts. So the two main parts that make up a sentence, the subject plus the predicate equal a sentence. And again, let me repeat the subject, that's our who, that's our noun, plus the predicate makes up a sentence. Subject plus predicate equals sentence. And so if you're following along on um, page 103 in your textbook, you will see that it tells us that every sentence has two parts. One part, the subject, tells who or what the sentence is about. The other part, the predicate, tells something about the subject. The predicate tells something about the subject. The subject usually comes before the predicate. In just a moment, we're going to look at a sentence there, but let's review what we talked about again, how we have fragments, we have sentences, and we have run together sentences. So let's review by taking a look here and seeing if we have a sentence or a fragment, and if we do, what do we need to do to fix it? So this first one, because you need to study. Because you need to study. Is that a complete thought? Where are you studying? How long are you studying? Who are you? What are you studying? It doesn't answer any of those questions, so this first one is a fragment. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a big F next to it for fragment. It's a fragment. Okay, let's look at this next one. How do you spell your last name? How do you spell your last name? Sounds like a sentence to me, yeah? And in fact, let's review. We have four different types of sentences for. Um, we have a declarative sentence, which tells. We have an imperative sentence, which commands. We have an exclamatory sentence, which exclaims. And we have an interrogative sentence, which asks. So again, let's review those. Declarative tells. Imperative commands exclamatory exclaims an interrogative asks well let's look at this one again how do you spell your last name that's a that's an interrogative question so what do we need to put at the end of an interrogative question or an interrogative sentence i should say a question mark i know that's kind of hard to see but there is a question mark there i promise okay. Okay, we're going to flip the side and see some more sentences. I'll be right back with you. Okay, I got my makeshift whiteboard here flipped, and we're looking at a few more examples of sentences or sentence fragments or run-together sentences. And just a reminder, today's lesson is on subject plus predicate equals sentence. And so I have that here, and you guys know purple's my favorite color, so of course I had to make the sentence purple. And the subject plus the predicate equals a sentence. Okay, so let's take a look over here at this one. We walked slowly out of school and then we raced home. We walked slowly out of school and then we raced home. Is that a complete thought? It's actually a couple of complete thoughts if you look at it. Um, and in fact, that's what we call a run-together sentence. When you're looking for a run-together sentence, you want to look for any unnecessary ands, and thens, or and sos. And in fact, we have an and then right here. So let's rewrite this run-together sentence. We walked slowly out of school and then we raced home. We're going to cross out the and then and put a period. So now we have a sentence, we walked slowly out of school. And then our next one, and then we raced home. We're going to actually go ahead and put a then back in there. And we're going to say then we raced home and put a period at the end of that. That's another complete thought. So let's try that now. Let's make this a capitalized then. And again, sorry, my marker is a little faint. Um, then we raced home. So 
So now we have two sentences. We walked slowly out of school, period. Capital then, we raised home, period. All right, one more to check, one more to check. What a great idea you had. What a great idea you had. So this is a sentence, it's a complete thought, but this sentence is lacking punctuation at the end. So let's review our different types of punctuations that go with our sentences. We have declarative sentences, which tell, and our imperative sentences, which command. Both of those end with a period. We have our interrogative sentences, which end with a question mark. They ask questions. And then we have our exclamatory sentences, which exclaim and have an exclamation point at the end. And you all know Miss T loves exclamation points. So this sentence, what a great idea you had, is an exclamatory. So we're going to go ahead and put an exclamation point at the end of that. What a great idea you had. Oh, that shows up really nicely. Okay, so today's new concept are subjects and predicates. Um, and again, the subject is who or what the sentence is about. That's our noun. And then our predicate tells us something about that noun. Sometimes we might have adjectives thrown in there, which will describe our noun. Um, but we're going to be dealing with verbs specifically. So our sentence here at the bottom, the fearless lion tamer cracked his whip. The fearless lion tamer cracked his whip. And so we've got two parts to that sentence. Um, what is the sentence about? The fearless lion, lion tamer. So the fearless, fearless lion tamer is my subject. I'm going to go ahead and draw a vertical line between my subject and my predicate. And when you're diagramming sentences, that's going to be one of the first things you do after you identify your subject and predicate is to mark the difference between them with a vertical line. So that's who our sentence is about, the fearless lion tamer. And what does this sentence say about him? It says that he cracked his whip. So the fearless lion tamer cracked his whip. Very good. Our subject, the fearless lion tamer, that's who the sentence is about, and cracked his whip. That tells us a little bit more about our subject. This is missing a period at the end, so let's put one on there. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as you're working hard on your subjects and predicates, just remember your subject is your noun, and that's your who or your what in the sentence. And your predicate tells you a little bit about your subject. All right, that's it for all. Thank you so much for hanging out with Miss T, and I'll catch you later. Bye!